Hi, this presentation was developed for the Control and Sensing Systems Unit of the Combined Electronics Framework at Bournemouth University. It's the second part of the section on stochastic processes in a sequence of short videos to support the unit studies in robotics and in particular the work on Kalman filters. The first clip introduced the idea of stochastic processes, random variables and probability. This one provides some background to probability distributions and their relationship to stochastic signals. There are lots of different distributions to represent the sort of randomness going on in particular applications. We'll concentrate on the uniform distribution to develop some ideas and then move on to the Gaussian distribution we'll be using for the Kalman filter. So starting then with the uniform distribution, this is the one for which there's an equal probability of an event occurring between two given limits. For example, a baby's smile, apparently, may last any equally probable time between 0 and 23 or 24 seconds until other bodily functions or stimuli take over. An example of a discrete process is the throwing of a fair die that we introduced probability with in the first clip. This slide shows a graph of a continuous uniform probability distribution for baby smiles. The probability density function f is plotted against the random variable x which can, in this case, take a value of baby smile length between 0 and 24 seconds. It's a function which gives the probability of x taking a value in any range as the area under the graph in that range. The height of the function is 0 outside of 0 to 24 seconds, indicating zero probability of a smile. The height between 0 and 24 is 1 over 24, so that the total area under the curve is 1 over 24 times 24, or unity as a smile being somewhere in that range is a certainty. If you want to predict the probability the smile will last for under 12 seconds, say, this will be the area between 0 and 12, or 12 times 1 over 24 equals 0.5. Similarly, the probability that the smile will last between 9 and 12 seconds is 3 times 1 over 24 equals 0.125, or a 1 in 8 chance. In general, the continuous form of the uniform distribution has a probability of f equals 1 over b minus a for the given range b minus a, so the total area is unity. The probability of the variable having an outcome between any two values, x1 and x2, is the area under the distribution between those values. In the case of the uniform distribution, this is a simple rectangular area. In the general case, however, the area under a curve is given by evaluating the integral between the relevant limits, as we shall see later. It's again certain that x is a value between plus and minus infinity. The discrete random variable takes specific values only. For a die throwing, the function comprises the dots with f equals 1 upon 6 at the face values of 1 to 6. It's a bit of a problem to add up areas under dots to calculate probabilities. But as is often the case for discrete systems, the magic Dirac function delta x minus i comes to the rescue. It has the property of only existing when the variable x equals i. For example, delta x minus 5 is the dot at x equals 5, delta x minus 4 is the dot at x equals 4, and so on. And we can represent the whole function as the sum of all the dots from x equals 1 up to x equals 6. However, the Dirac function also has the magic but convenient property of having zero width but unit area. And when we multiply the function by each 1 over 6 probability, we get the required probability area of 1 upon 6 for each valid integer value, such as 3. The probability of throwing an invalid number is p equals 0, because the function only exists at the dots. To find the probability of some combination of outcomes, or indeed the total of all the outcomes, we add up, or more formally integrate the function, over the appropriate range of the x-axis. So adding 6 lots of area 1 upon 6 gives the total probability of unity. And, of course, the total probability of the whole range from plus infinity to minus infinity is also unity. Thanks to the Dirac function, the discrete and continuous distributions work the same way, with the area under the function corresponding to the probability of the variable being in that range. In the discrete case, the probability of one outcome is simply the distribution function itself, and for a combination of outcomes, it's the sum of the function for that combination. For the continuous case, the summation becomes an integration of the range in question. Now there are loads more distributions, such as the Rayleigh distribution found in our mobile phone case study, but by far the most common probability distribution, and the one we'll be using for Kalman filters, is the Gaussian, or normal distribution. It has a classic bell-shaped curve. 
This example from Wikipedia is a fairground machine in which ball bearings drop into slots after many random collisions with the pins. The function isn't an evenly spread uniform type of distribution, but one in which the middle values get a bigger count than the outer ones. Many natural processes work like this. The Gaussian distribution is particularly useful for describing the overall combination of lots of different random events, such as these pin collisions, even if the individual components themselves are not Gaussian. It's also the sort of result you might get for measuring a random variable which groups around an average value, such as the values of electronic components, say, or the heights of students in a class, where more are around the average than at the extremes. Here, the height and area of each individual rectangle represents the number of students in each height range, and as a percentage of the total, the probability of a student being in that height range. It's not exactly bell-shaped, but infinite measurements with infinitesimally thin height band should approach it. Notice, however, that this is the histogram rather than the probability density function at the moment, but if we were to divide by the total of 100 students, the area under the curve becomes unity, and we can then read off the probability of a randomly selected student in the group being in any one height band directly. So, for example, if 27 of the total 100 are around 70 inches tall, then the probability of any one student from the class being in that height range is P70 is 0.27. The area under the curve between any two values, again, represents the probability of a result in that range. So, for example, the probability of a height between 64 and 70 inches is the total area between those values of 0.18 plus 0.42 plus 0.27 or 0.87, 87% of the total. In summary, the formula for probability from the histogram requires dividing the range of histogram values we're interested in by the total number involved. This is included in the probability distribution, so that the probability of any single outcome is simply the function value, and the probability of a combination of outcomes is simply the sum of the function values for those outcomes. For the continuous case, we'd actually have to integrate the function to find the area under the curve between A and B to get the probability of the variable taking a value in that region. This is a formula to generate the bell curve. It looks a bit nasty, but gazing intently at it shows that it is a continuous exponential function of x with only two parameters, the mean value, mu, and the spread of values around the mean, the standard deviation, sigma. It's absolutely convenient for us to assume the mean values of our noise signals are zero, so the only parameter left is sigma. This MATLAB code plots the curve for zero mean and unity standard deviation over the range of x from minus 4 to plus 4 in steps of 0.01. One of the characteristics you can see here is that the ends tail off but don't become zero until infinity. In other words, it's theoretically possible to occasionally get very large positive or negative values of x which will appear as amplitude spikes in the signal. But it's far more likely for the signal to be close to the mean than anywhere else. If you want to know the probability, say, of the signal taking a value between 1 and 2, we must integrate the function to calculate the area under the curve between those values. This slide shows how we can estimate that by adding up the areas of the small rectangles f times dx between the range 1 and 2. We first calculate the value of the function f at x equals 1 and multiply it by the thin width dx equals 0.01 to find the area of the first rectangle. Then we step along to x equals 1.01 and calculate the area of the next rectangle and then step on until we reach x equals 2. The MATLAB code on this slide does this calculation and finds the result is the area a equals 0.137. That is, the variable will take a value of between plus 1 and plus 2 with a probability of p equals 0.137 or 13.7% of the time. We can use MATLAB to generate random numbers with a Gaussian distribution using the randn function. Here we set a zero mean unity standard deviation plot of a thousand Gaussian distributed random numbers. This slide compares the bell curve with the corresponding random signal. Notice that with zero mean and unity standard deviation, the signal is mostly contained within the plus one to minus one range around zero, and hardly any spikes are bigger than three or four, although larger spikes are possible, but less likely. Also, we found out that the probability of the signal taking values between 1 and 2 is approximately 0.137. This bit of MATLAB code checks that out by counting the values of y in that range over our 1,000 samples. The results vary from trial to trial, but seem to be in the right ballpark. Taking more numbers and trials should tighten the result up a bit. Well, in the next section, we can go on to check out some of the measures of stochastic signals.